Hello and welcome to Tech Week TV, powered by Callahan Innovation. My name is Jake Miller. I'm the co-founder and CEO of Unfiltered. Uh, thank you so much for joining this live stream today. Uh, I'm really honoured to be here uh, for this really exciting session on uh, health tech, uh, precision healthcare, and how we can be in control. So I'm joined today uh, by uh, Jay Harrison. He's the founder and CEO of Edison Health. So thank you so much, Jay, for being mm -hmm. here. Um, I'm joined by Dr. Eula Haywood, clinical director of Edison Health. Thank you, uh, Eula. And I'm also joined by uh, Brendan, uh, Brendan Swan, uh, Swan, who's um, the uh, chief scientist at Edison Health. So Brendan was a, a late addition, so excuse me on my uh, post-it note here today. So thank you guys so much for being here. I just thought to kick this session off, um, precision health, you know, it's a pretty technical topic, so it might just be worth starting with what actually is precision health. It's a good question. So uh, precision health is the latest approach to healthcare. In that uh, forever or to date that we've just taken this best guess approach to healthcare. Yes. And today we've got this amazing opportunity to make informed decision, like you know, something that's highly personalized based on myself or and my genetics and my blood work or anything that's kind of makes this truly about me. Yeah, absolutely. And why is this an area that all, all three of you are deeply passionate about and have decided to dedicate a portion of your life to? You know, why is this why is this something that, that, that resonates with you? For me, um, I've been an emergency medicine specialist my whole working career, and so very much rescuing people who've already fallen off the cliff, be it accident or illness, but a lot of chronic disease burden on the healthcare system as it is, and I've always been incredibly interested in the prevention side. Of, you know, a pound of um, cure is with a pinch of prevention. It's so much cheaper to actually stop the diseases in the first place. Yeah. So that's where my passion lies. Okay, mm. fantastic. Yeah, what about, what about you? Um, for me... I did my PhD in genetics, and it's a timing thing. Genetics has just entered this new kind of revolutionary era when there's new technologies available to all of us um, that enable this to happen for the first time. So yeah. it's, yeah. It's a, it's a good point, right? It's a, yeah, the technology. So exciting. Yeah, it's mm. very, very exciting. Mm. We call it this convergence, you know, all of these amazing things, uh, genetics, technology, life sciences, all come together in this kind of really unique moment in time, and yeah. we just happen to be sitting there, and from a... Mm passion perspective. We've got extensive backgrounds in our own field, yes. but it's how we're applying them in one, you know, one setting. Yeah, absolutely. Mm. And I, I want you to talk a little bit more, uh, Jay, about sort of what actually Edison Health is. And I know you can do a bit of a presentation, so I'll hand over to you to, to get into that now. Yeah, sure. So uh, I guess from a background perspective, we've, uh, I'm a sports scientist by qualification, uh, and we've applied evidence-based interventions for, from a healthcare perspective and seen these amazing outcomes, you know, and we haven't used a precision filter. So the precision filter says that we just apply this kind of broad-based approach for everyone, right. but no one's the same, you yeah, know. Yeah. So you've got your own genetic makeup, you've got your own history, uh, and so now we, when you apply this precision filter, you can say, well, now I can design an evidence-based intervention that I know was designed for me. So there's, we use this really interesting term, uh, a line which is you might be doing everything right just not right for you mm. and so what happens is when you get this right the outcomes come much faster and so this is something that we've seen mm. in in the work that we're doing is it it's not just applying these amazing technologies and uh, and science it's seeing these amazing outcomes and that's that's encouraging that's super encouraging particularly Absolutely. when you can think about how can we take this to five million people as opposed to you know how can we do this for the few yeah it's so exciting yeah mm. and you do you have a pre digital presentation yes, that we're going to walk through as well so we so this, I, I, we, we touch on, I guess, what inspired us to do this. And one of the things that really truly inspired us was uh, a quote from Thomas Edison. And this quote was, the doctor of the future will give no medication, but will interest his patients in the care of the human frame, diet, and the cause and prevention of disease. And that's exactly why we chose the name Edison for, because this is, underlies everything we do. Yeah. The interesting part of this, uh, I guess, the introduction, or the kind of where precision health has come to the forefront, is that there's just this kind of this new paradigm that this is the this is perfect timing for what we're doing, mm. and this is there's a there's a really uh, big global shift in terms of some like the Americans are doing this in a particular way, yeah. uh, and and lead the space particularly when you look at things like genome sequencing, which yes. Brendan will talk a bit um, a bit about shortly. But it's just this kind of uh, I guess this again come back to the convergence. It's just timing. And so you've seen this evolution of the healthcare model from this kind of reactive ambulance at the bottom of the cliff yes. to this, you know, where we sit today, which is, uh, you know, we're making an informed decision. And the next stage of that, which is, I guess, what we're focused on or working towards is uh, how do you get to a predictive 
um, you know, a predictive uh, framework. Yeah. So, and that's where you like utilize inter interesting technologies like artificial intelligence and so on and so forth. Yeah, and tell me about this ring you're wearing. I oh, heard yes, something yeah. quite specific about that as well. Yeah, so uh, we use this as part of our uh, the protocol. So. The, it provides this fantastic feedback loop for us, you know, in terms of understanding sleep, stress. It's like uh, I got sick last month and my body temperature jumped by about 14% the night before. And, you know, so it, like there's this really interesting insight that you get. It gives us incredible visibility. And so we look at all of our clients that are on the Edison protocol. We uh, remotely monitor their health. And, you know, and that provides the, they have these intermittent check-ins with us. Um, throughout their experience to ensure that we're kind of, you know, again, where it's that prevention approach as opposed to the reactive yeah. approach. That's very, very cool. Um, so, and we look at this now and we, like, this this will become the choice that we have is status quo, which is where you take a best guess approach, yeah. or precision health, which is where you take this informed and educated approach. Mm -hmm. And that's the, that's the drive of Edison. And so the, where this becomes really fascinating is, like, imagine that this is life by design. So you get to choose like a, like an aspiration as such. You know, I want this is what I want from my health, and this is what I want for the health of my family or whatever. And you can now choose that. And this is this is again what drives us in terms of this real fascination with this space. Mm -hmm. When we look at this, the other part of this is ensuring that when you look at a health journey, is that uh, if we can facilitate that process, which is what we do. So we have a continuous care model, which says that again. We will look for uh, problems before they become problems, you know, and, and ensure that we're keeping our clients on track. So as opposed to, like, the client turns up in a year's time and says, hey, I've got this health problem, yeah. we could have picked it up in the meantime. So wow. that's the whole idea. Yeah, it's very, very good. So it provides a level of assurance, I guess. And this now is probably one of the most exciting parts for us. And again, uh, Brendan's contribution to what we're doing is mm -hmm. looking at this world of, of limitless possibility. Mm -hmm. And when, once we start to understand the genetic possibility and potential, both from, a, I guess, a risk and aspiration perspective, yes. this becomes super exciting for us. Absolutely. So we have, a, I guess, a, a dual uh, uh, mission. We're, we've got the idea that we want to look at improving people's lifespan, but also improving their health span. So how do we how do we achieve this? The idea is we want you to live as long as possible for as well as possible, you know, as well as possible. So that's kind of, I guess, comes back to our again our mantra and our approach is looking at uh, how do we achieve those two things. And you know, that's looking at performance. So how do I optimize my life? Because you can always be a, a better version of yourself from a health perspective. Uh, and and also, how do we kind of avoid the the future risk? You know, I might have a predisposition to heart disease. Yeah. So how can I manage that today? Okay. And that's the, again, that's the precision health approach. Yeah. So in essence, what we look at is a, it's a highly personalized and whole body wellness and, uh, uh, protocol and initiative. So we don't look at one thing, we look at the entire, the entire health picture and we manage that for an individual using this precision health filter. Wow. And so we like to say that the future of healthcare is here and it's us. It's very cool. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for taking us through that. It's uh, it's incredibly, incredibly inspiring, and the, the opportunity is obviously enormous. It reminds me, actually, my dentist uh, on his wall in the clinic. It says, uh, "Let's not fight. Let's not uh, fight disease. Let's seek help." Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That reminds me of, of uh, you know, it's a very similar philosophy of like you Absolutely. know. Absolutely. Yeah. Because health is not just the absence of disease by a long shot. Exactly. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So you know, I want to get into some more of these questions. So you know, why is data-driven healthcare healthcare important? Maybe you can kick us off, uh, Yula. Well, for um, the clients or the patients, it's incredibly important for them to track their progress and to see yeah. that what they're doing is actually working. Yeah. It's quite hard for for people when they're in the thick of it with a health problem say um, they have weight issues or they've been yo-yo dieting or um, they're struggling with their exercise, it's very difficult for them to monitor progress from a, a very objective point of view. So for us, the Aura Ring is incredibly useful yeah. because as a tool, it's a great sleep tracker but also a great activity tracker. Yeah. And it provides biofeedback data which we can then present to them and show them what progress they're making each month. Right. So very empowering, very motivating, very grounding for them and it allows us to meld some of their health aspirations with some of the targets that we pick out of their health protocol and to really map and measure their journey along the way. So we like to look after them for a good 12 months and, and right. track them, see 
updates from them every month, every three months, 12 months, etc. Okay, okay. Mm. And from a, from a te technology perspective, Brendan, obviously, you know, it's incredibly, I can imagine this is incredibly technically complex to build out some of this, uh, mm. you know, some mm. of this technology because it's, uh, you know, it really is uh, cutting edge. So mm. it, in terms of the talent available here in New Zealand, how are you guys finding that from a hiring perspective? Are the people here or are you having to increasingly bring more people in? People are knocking on our door. Okay. Brendan mm. here was a key example. Yeah. Well, absolutely wonderful. People just flock to the cause because okay. it's so inspirational. Yeah, for sure. Um, it's created something that doesn't exist in New Zealand, like this yeah. whole personalised health precision medicine. Does. Jay's created something that people want to work for because mm. they see how it fits into the future. Yeah. Like with my, like my genetics background, the first whole genome sequence was only done like 15 years ago. And since then we've done maybe 100,000 humans have had their whole genome sequence. But the information, the change of information available is just it's exponential. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So for people wanting to get into this field, what, what, what are your advice to be the, the best way to learn about it? You know, should, is, is university the right approach? Are there, um... Well, it's interesting you ask that because we are so cutting edge and we're really forging a new path here that there is no such thing as precision health in terms of a training scheme. There's no college, particularly no medical college, overseeing a curriculum, yeah. um, examinations, etc., qualifications. So. We're riding the wave at the crest, and uh, it's always the way with certain new areas in medicine. I remember that emergency medicine for paediatrics didn't exist as a specialty. Yeah. And some very dedicated people built Starship Children's Hospital because mm. they believed in the cause, and okay. now there's a dedicated college for that. So yeah. time will, will provide that, but at the moment, it's, it's all new. It's so early days, right? So mm. I would say yeah. um, get in touch with us, yeah. knock on our door, send us an email, talk to Jay, and take it from there. Yeah, We're, yeah we've got an amazing, talented team like, across multiple disciplines, you know, yes. from medical team, operational team, uh, you know, Brendan is our, our latest addition, which was just very fortuitous timing, you know, yes. in terms of, I guess we've started to gather this massive momentum of what we're doing. Yeah. Uh, it's also, I guess, from an interest perspective, where we kind of found that when, when you were on track was, it was the multiple different insurance companies have approached us to talk about this space, you know. So there's a real intrigue and interest in precision oh, health yeah. across multiple different, uh, both industries, insurance, and, mm. you know, organisations that have approached us to look after their exec teams. And, yeah. and just the kind of, I guess, the very fascinated individual, you know, like we look at this as, mm. as our early adopters who, you know, who are just thinking that they see this as the future of health. Yeah, you know? so is the, sales, is the primary sales channel B2C or B2B at this point? Uh, well, good question. So where B2C is a, uh, our network was, I guess, the first, okay. uh, you know, gave us the initial momentum, but now we've definitely got a very solid B2B, like, you yeah. Know, I mean, when you mention insurance companies, that's really exciting, right? Because yeah. that's ultimately the, the game they're in, yeah. Well, the thing that yeah. excites me is that we've got GPs and cardiologists, um, diabetologists, lots of very forward-thinking academics coming to us saying, oh, we felt this way for a long time mm. and we agree that something needs to be done and this is it. Yeah, mm. so, that's very cool. Yeah, and we've done a few sessions today talking about capital raising and, you know, capital markets. How are you finding uh, that here in New Zealand? Have, have, have you looked to raise money yet? Are you sort of seeking investors, the strategic investors from offshore or from at home? How are you approaching that? That's a good, good question. We've got international aspirations, so we want to take Edison to future cities globally yes. and Technology and genetics are a big part of our, our strategy. So we we avoided taking capital for so we're completely organic, like self-funded. Okay, um, that's great. Yeah. But we've just decided now because of the, I, we're just looking at the signs in terms of the opportunity, and we've decided we're going to capitalise. So okay, we're preparing for that now. So okay, yeah. yeah, it takes a lot of time, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And can you give us some examples of like some some real life success stories you've seen? Absolutely, yeah, I'd love to know more about that. I would love to that. give you some stories. So yeah. just to give you a, a brief overview. Um, the minute people walk in the door, it's a daily success story because as soon as they get a personal insight into their own genetic profile, yeah. a lot of the sort of um, quandaries that they've had throughout their life fall into place. You know, the, the vague symptoms of headaches or fatigue or digestive issues, complaints that they've never really been able to put their finger on. Yeah. So that brings great joy and it also really mo motivates them to get better. Yeah. But my particular interest is driving down deliberate... Um, high blood pressure and high cholesterol yes. in resistant patients, particularly patients mm -hmm. who are overweight, um, not particularly healthy lifestyles. Yeah. They're on statins and blood pressure medications, and we've yeah. had some huge successes there. Okay. Within as little as three to four months, um, blood pressure's as low as they've been for 20 years on people wow. on triple therapies. And yeah. you know, familial uh, hypercholesterolemia is a condition where you inherit very high cholesterol, and it's notoriously stubborn to get it down with even drugs like statins. Yes. 
but uh, some of our patients are actually seeing for the first time in decades that their cholesterol is dropping with some of our approaches yeah, and yeah. the weight loss. As soon as we can give their ME1 copy number to them and show them what their exact carbohydrate processing ability is, yeah. we get them on the right nutrition um, and lifestyle plan. Within the first month, I'm seeing five, six kilos just dropping off readily, and it's not that hard for them. Wow, I'd like to get clever food combining. Yeah, and do you um, do you think this uh, your precision healthcare should be part of the public system? Oh, 100 percent, yes. Okay. Yeah. Right. What can yes. we do to get the government on board? That's, well, a, that's a slow movement. That's, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's going to take some time, but um, we have good networks with GPs and specialists, okay. hospital specialists, and we're building those networks. Um, hoping to, to take it forward as quickly as possible. And is it, are you, you're welcome to skip over this question, but are you finding it more innovative and easier to work with the new government than the last in the health space? We, we haven't even touched on that. Like, I mean, we've, okay. got a, we've set up a charitable trust where we're applying this stuff, and, and uh, I guess for our, I guess it's part of our Give Back program. Yeah. You know, so we're looking at how do we apply precision health in a mm. lower socioeconomic and I'm mm. part Māori, so how do we apply this in a... That's a, a real passion for us. Yeah, yeah. In, yeah. In, those, in those environments. And so that's, you know, that's, that's a big part of our mission. So, yes, we want to be successful commercially, but we're also like, how do we... Because this is a massive problem for us, you know, like the, yeah. the kind of state of the, exactly. the nation's health. Yeah, yeah and, and just talking about that, like, um, I don't know the specific numbers, and I'm sure you can help me here, but my understanding is in terms of, like, obesity statistics and so on, mm. it, it is, uh, you know, generally worse with Māori Pacifica mm, groups. But the, and then as well, one of the challenges of that is obviously in terms of the statistics around, like, social economic that mm. is that is a problem so when it comes to paying for this and actually mm. having allowing people to be able to afford this what are your what's your vision around actually helping those who might be at most need but might not have the the funds to be able to get involved it's part of our uh, strategy right now is we're building out a i guess our framework and the what we're delivering as a solution it definitely starts at a particular end of the market yeah but the influences yeah, yeah. Okay. filters down right. but the, go the goal is to use technology to give us the ability to scale you know so that's yeah. a mm. if we can if you think of what we deliver now as a highly personalized and managed approach is if we can use technology to as a as a leverage as a leverage tool yeah. then we could take this to to you know, 5 million people as opposed to mm. 5,000 people. Yeah, it's so exciting. Yeah, mm. and for all of you, I mean, what does healthcare look like in 20, 2050? Well... <laughs> we spend a lot of time, well, I do <laughs> spend a lot of time dreaming about this, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, so, like, there's, there's some really interesting stuff on the horizon for precision health, like, yeah. mm. we've been talking about genetic therapy, and that's, you know, mm, like, yeah. artificial intelligence, and so there's, like, this... But we look at this in today and we go, okay, what are the decisions we need to be making today yeah. that enable us to participate in tomorrow? So that's yeah. A, yeah. yeah. Okay. Mm. And, and, and just talk me through, like, from a client perspective, if I was a, a customer, like, what would that client experience look like from start to getting some actual results? Like, just for, for viewers yeah. that aren't entirely I can, familiar. I can run you through that yeah, process. I think one of the things mm. that's clear, and um, I, I had a question around this as well, is just like, there's not a lot of awareness, and mm. you guys have this amazing technology. And it's like, how can we mm. raise the awareness of what's mm. going on to get it to more people? Oh, so I'd definitely. love to. To understand, yeah. Um, so generally people come in for a, a complimentary consultation and what we do is we assess what their health needs and aspirations are. Yes. Usually about 15 minutes, just a casual chat. Yeah. And then they'll come back and they'll book onto a, a medical and they spend 90 minutes with me or Dr. Brett. And so that time gives us a really valuable opportunity to dive deep into the individual. So we cover all sorts of topics like sleep, diet, exercise, um, all the usual past histories, medications, issues, mm -hmm. potential barriers to improvement. Um, we do lung function testing, cardiology type workup with ECG and um, blood work, blood pressure, pulse, 3D body scan. We obviously do your genetic profiling with okay. two buckle swabs, okay. cheek swabs, and um, a barrage of blood tests right. um, and other biomarkers that we measure and so that whole hour and a half is quite an intense um, process but people really come out feeling that they've been heard truly listened to and yeah. that they can come back in four weeks with their results and have a, a real plan okay. for gaining some insight and taking a bit of control back. Right, and those kind of genetic swaps and stuff you mentioned, that's similar to like the 23andMe kind of things they have in the US? There's the, well actually, probably Brendan can answer this, but there is a couple of um, techniques that we could use, but the buckle swab, which is the inside of the cheek, is, mm -hmm. it's very quick, it takes a minute per swab and it's very efficient. Okay, mm. wow. Yeah, well, I'm going to come in for a session. I think it yeah, sounds cool. exciting. Oh, yeah, we'll, we'll, book it. we'll book it in after this. Mm. Um, and, you know, just before you finish off, um, I guess what, you know, is New Zealand, uh, I'd love to know what other global markets are kind of leading in this space mm. as well. Who, mm. who, who are you guys looking at? What countries do you think have some really exciting things going on? And, mm. um, you know, how can we encourage more innovation in, in medtech in 
New Zealand. Well, the UK is doing a huge project at the moment. I'm not sure if you've heard of the Biobank project, okay. but um, between 2006 and 2010, they gathered the data of over 500,000 people in the UK. Wow. They did genetic testing, um, genome-wide genotyping on them, lots of blood tests and other physical tests, but they've collated all of that data as a, a worldwide resource, yeah. and uh, they're following them for at least 30 years, so it's a massive prospective cohort study, yeah. and that's going to be incredibly valuable at looking at what drives disease, um, what we can do to prevent it, and taking healthcare to the next step. Okay. And in Singapore, um, they're very forward thinking. They've put this aim of eradicating type 2 diabetes by 2050, wow. which you know is, is sensible. It's a completely preventable disease yeah. with the right diet and lifestyle, and it, it robs people of lots of health. Yes. Plus, it costs their government a billion dollars a year. So, yeah. Um, yeah. they're two spaces that I'm watching carefully, and Jane okay. said his eye on the United States. Right. Right. The states have got, the, from a commercial level, they've got like the leader is called human longevity. Okay. And, but they're very, again, they're just, it's a very diagnostic approach. They're not looking yeah. at diagnostics plus intervention, which is we, what we do differently. So okay. it's, a, it's a fascinating space period. And, and we just want to be in that kind of, you know, that, that bleeding edge. Yeah. Mm. And, and I've, I've, read a, I've obviously read all of your bios, but I'd love to, for the, for the viewers that may have not, like how did you, when did you start this? Why did you start this? Like, mm. you know. He's a creative genius. Yeah. He goes for long walks and comes back with... <laughs> well, there's a, there's a, we've got a, an amazing team, and that's mm. kind of you know we pulled together, I guess, this. But it came about by default. We were kind of working in the corporate health space, and then a, a client basically said, "Look, can you take over an executive health program?" Mm. So from that, we're just out of complete passion. We've been interested in genetics and technology, and so I put together this thing called the Edison Protocol, and we sent it through to him, and he said, "I think you guys should take this to market." So it was kind of like a okay. Yeah, and how long ago was this? We, that was in June last year. Okay. And we went to market in September. Oh, wow. Yeah. So it's all very new. It's very yeah, new. Yeah, it's so exciting. Yeah. And what's been the biggest challenge so far? Uh, yeah, just forging a new space, you know, like yeah. this. Like, yeah. And ensuring, like, I mean, we've just got this kind of solid commitment to, to delivering client value. Yeah. You know, so, yeah. Yeah, and what do you find, like, you know, um, in the US, there's been a, obviously a very high profile story with uh, Theranos in terms mm -hmm. of the, the fall down there. And I think, like, particularly, I spend most of my time in the US, and I think MedTech was potentially hurt quite quite mm. badly by that, just in terms mm. of, um, you know, people's perceptions yeah. of what's real and what's not. Do you come up against that, and how do you sort of, how do mm. you com not convince people, but sort of really um, allow people to understand that this mm. is this is this stuff's true and it's not really working snake for oil. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Perhaps um, Brendan could talk a little bit yeah, about yeah. the genetics. Yeah, well, we're not selling like a device like that, I suppose. We're kind of using information that everyone's already proven. Yes. It's been published in scientific papers, and we're just using that information to help inform us about how to make decisions and make wise lifestyle choices. Yeah. Yeah. It's just that we also combine that with genetic testing, your blood analysis your heart rate monitoring is sleep and then we combine it all into one. Yeah, mm. exactly. Because my understanding is like, you know, um, and I don't know, I'm not a super scientific person, but there's, you know, some people need a lot more vegetables than others and different mm. people need more meats mm. and people need more red meats and, and everybody's just eating the same, right? And, yeah, yeah. you know, That's exercising the same amount, whereas it's all, should rebelling. be highly tailored. Yeah. We're Absolutely. rebelling against the one size fits all approach. Yeah, <laughs> no, I'm 100% I'm serious when I say I'll book a session because mm. I'm fascinated by the space. So mm. thank you guys so much for yeah, making the time. Thanks for having us. Yeah, it's fascinating and uh, yeah, Thank you to the viewers for tuning in as well. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much to uh, Callahan Innovation for uh, sponsoring today's session. And uh, yeah, we look forward to uh, seeing you soon at the next session. So thank you so much.